This is a little behind the scenes of what it's like to be me. I am going to be doing a podcast sober, but right now I'm not. I've had some, you know, nah, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about my life personally here as if we're at a bar. And meanwhile, the podcast is meant to be a, like a ladder, like a outline, like a good breadcrumbs, the kind that's, that take you to a good place and don't deceive you. Um, because you choose, you choose what it is that you're going to take on in your life. And empowerment is where it's at, okay? So empowerment comes from making decisions as an adult-minded person rather than a child. So hold that thought because I'm gonna share with you that as an adult child of a narcissist, A-C-O-N, I don't have anything other than this to say. You get programmed and you don't know you're programmed until you realize it's not a very, it's a mal, the behavior that you uh, adapted to as a child to deal with a narcissistic parent is a maladaptive behavior in modern society. It's almost antisocial. It's anti-success, really. Okay, so hold that thought, grab a cup of cuppa, whatever you're gonna have. Yeah. Welcome to the uh, casual chats. <sighs> Welcome. Welcome. I'm glad to have you. I decided not to edit my work because I went online and I binged. And I binged watched. And I became increasingly frustrated by the, the sheer number of edits that existed. And that a person couldn't stay entertaining without edits and ching, things blowing up in your face and slides and ching, ching, ching happening everywhere. One of those steakhouses where they throw food at you. <laughs> oh my God. Um, my parents, uh, in 2022, and I celebrated the birthday with my mother and my father, with both my siblings and my um, dear, uh, the lady love of my brother, uh, Debbie. She was there. But we were at this place, and I forgot the name, and I'm not going to say it because I don't want to discredit the place. But I was like, hey, Dad, what do you think of that place? And he said, I don't care if I never went back. <laughs> and, and it was one of those places that I hadn't been to because um, I, I was a macrobiotic for a really long time. And you know what macrobiotic means? Macro, large, biotic, bios, bi biology, life, biotic. Um, not robotic, biotic, life. And I um, was macrobiotic when I was at the, studying um, in Arizona and Tucson specifically. At, uh, I studied at three different places within that city. And I even studied with Dr. Banner, who now has a hospital. He was doing 
um, lower epinephrine and its effect on the, uh, he would use the aorta of, of the rabbit that was involved with his studies as a little tiny uh, a physician's assistant. Uh, it, uh, it was through the nutrition program at the UVA. Yeah. I gotta quit the background. I don't give myself enough street creds. Or creds, for that matter. So, if it serves me well, it serves me well. I've been kept humble, humble, humble for a really long time. And I have had my fair share of humble pie. How about you? Haven't we all been dished out humble pie at some point in our lives and gone, oh, oh man. Well, don't give yourself too much of a hard time. You don't have to eat the humble pie. All you have to do is accept the fact that you have been humbled and uh, then you can go from there. So all of that's metaphor for not creating the life that you want. It's like dealing with the cards you've been dealt. It's like a game. So look at your life in a deeper way than, than in these rhetorical ways of um, you get what you deserve or you manifest your life, you manifest your, your manifestation abilities will determine your success and your success is measured by wealth. Your higher self or your the human element of yourself that is outside of the body but is in an everlasting consciousness and energy that has a cohesive pattern to it that works through the human personality. So that is everlasting. So it's like the quirky person I am will continue to be. And I, and, uh, I actually I finally realized that. So I'm, I'm enjoying it now. But when you are raised by an adult, uh, a child, uh, sorry, that's right, a pathological narcissist, that not only do they feel the need to berate you, but they also somehow steer you away. That woman cut my hair off when I was a freshman in high school because I was too pretty and getting too many compliments. So she put it in braids and all I'm, and I, and I, I every night, no, no. Oh, take a shower, I'll put it in braids. Funny thing is, I, I, I it, it created a wave, and other uh, people were inspired to cut their hair short like me. But I hated it all the while, and I wasn't proud of creating that wave. And I was even given cred, street, street cred, <clears throat> with my school, Kate Welton. She cut her hair. Her hair was so pretty. She had this beautiful auburn hair with little <laughs> um, streaks of blonde on both sides. And she cut her hair. And she said, I inspired her. And meanwhile, I was tortured. So that's one of the things I've realized that I may not have enjoyed myself in the, or that haircut, but she felt empowered by hers. Yeah. So I'm going to do my life now. Um, and it's not, not just now, but going forward and forth with this whole notion and knowledge that everything's just okay fine 
<laughs> Everything's perfect, as a matter of fact. Everything's perfect. Your ego wants this and that. Your programming or whatever. Or you're like watching too much porn and expecting this and that ever out of a woman. Or girls watching Disney and expecting Prince Charming and the princess thing happening. I mean, can you imagine Cinderella? She meets this man and decides to marry him and she doesn't even know if he's a jerk or if he's effing the chambermaid and he just needs a breeder. I mean, you just don't know, Princess Diana didn't, you know? So, <sighs> this is not complimenting me this um this angle but what the heck let me raise you let me raise you let me raise my standards there we are you're gonna be at a little quirk level uh, there we go ah oh, that's better yeah I don't have to stoop I was having to stoop before. You know what a nuisance that is? <sighs> I'm gonna show you a picture. I hope you can see it. But you can't. Oh, there we go. So this is a picture of me, the younger person. And that's a picture of my mother. Now she she's either 64 or 65. And guess how old I am there. This is my second marriage. I'm either 37 or 38. It was right before it because it was in November. It was 11-11-2000. 11 11 2000. So this 11 11 2026, it will have been 26 years ago. And I will be. Yeah, yeah, I got it right. I was um, 38. And my mother was 65. See how she cut her hair short like that? That's how she cut my hair. I call that child abuse, but <clears throat> I pray for social services to come. I'm kidding. <clears throat> you make do, man. You make do and your, your siblings, your siblings when you're a child of a narcissist are what make it worth it. And my brother, time and time and time again, uh, saved my life so many times so many times and uh, I'm a pack animal you know I'm a bitch I, I, I love animals I love dogs and I'm also an independent pussy cat so this is a going fast forward to um, 2005 and my parents, oh. Oh. when I was married to the man who that wedding was with, I had some, you know, white privilege. I had, I, I experienced wealth and enjoyed it. And uh, it came at a price which is why I'm not with that man anymore. But may uh, his life be blessed and may his happiness be everlasting. Uh, may the angry man within him go into entropy and may he learn to be good to cats for all eternity. Because cats are very special. You know, my family didn't call me cat. 
they call me Kak. And Kat is a shortened version for Kathleen. And that was um, given to me by my friends when I was studying nutrition. And then later on, it changed. But at the time I met my friends, I was studying nutrition. And I didn't have the ability to see far. And I didn't want to become a registered dietitian and adhere to <coughs> somebody, else's stand, somebody else's standards of, of nutrition. And I thought that if I got a degree, I then had to conform to a set standard. I did not realize that the degree then qualified you to set your own standards but so does also life experience. So I chose the life experience, not realizing that it would have been perfectly acceptable for myself to do the other. And so then I studied um, art and I realized that it was harder to create art that made it sense to the viewer than it was to study facts and memorize them and pass a test. In fact, I found art harder than chemistry at which I actually mastered the Bohr's formula. I knew uh, my table of elements really, really well. And on a three by five index card, I wrote the, all those formulas down. And during my chemistry test, I scored an A when I was studying in Tucson. But, they gave us this teacher, teacher's assistant in chem lab that would, did not speak the English language as her first one. And I couldn't understand a word she said. And I didn't realize that all you had to do to, to get an A credit was to show up. It didn't matter if you performed well. And I dropped the class because I was frustrated by not understanding her. And I, I felt like I was faking it. Well, that's a lot of the education. And this was in the 80s. It's, all you have to do is pay to play. So then after that disillusion, um, I decided I needed a real life wife. I, I uh, enrolled in a community college and pursued a paralegal certificate. A two-year associative, associative, associate, a two-year associate degree, and I mastered that. Um, I had a lot of eye-opening incidents with fellow classmates. I had some eye-opening incidents with teachers. I had some eye-opening incidents with so much. And I came to realize that I respect the law and it's a game too. You just have to know what forms to fill out and what rules to apply. Just like Bohr's formula. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that difficult. So I gotta thank the universe for my life. Uh, I am very grateful for my parents. I, I, it's been hellish. I had a very, very difficult time growing up. I had to get through a lot of grief, a lot of ego death. And I, I tear up thinking about it because it's just so hard to realize that you were with two people that didn't see you at all, nor did they ever appreciate you. And like, how could somebody exist like that? But also, how good did somebody not be able to see me like that? So I have to see me like that. I have to do the heavy lifting for myself. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to that. <laughs> ah.
so much more to tell you, but I want to keep this uh, not much more over 20 minutes. Um, hope you enjoyed our little after hours chat. What I want to do with the, um, excuse me, <laughs> the uh, more formal um, podcasts is to actually have thought it out and written an outline and have things to discuss. So going forward, realize that I will be doing these casual things in which I haven't thought about anything. In fact, there's no show notes. And then uh, we will just continue to share and know that life is, and I'm gonna share this with you. And this I know to be true, and I have to remind myself of it. And my brother grows tired of me telling him. And I, was, and I say to him, life is perfect just the way it is. And yes, it can suck really, really bad. But you have got to change the dial on your radio. Just tune into a different frequency and you'll see something completely different. Mwah.